Hello guys, I'm Xinyi. So today for this video, I'm gonna explain about Form 5 Bab 7, which is the cost pengeluaran dengan TPM chapter. So this chapter actually have two parts, which the first part 7.1 cost pengeluaran is talking about format questions, which we will use penyata format to solve your answer and it's all about kilang. While TPM is also about kilang, but more of calculation based, we will have formula to find out what is the minimum point, which is called titik pulang model. And also we have other formulas such as margin charuman seunit and as well as untung sasaran. So it's a graph question where you are surely gonna score if you understand how to find these three formulas out and as well as solve them. So for this video, I'm going to first explain to you guys what is the components inside your cost pengeluaran and what is the format structure actually looks like or what items is under each section. So make sure you understand that part first before you go into answering your questions. So this cost pengeluaran is actually the first part which I'm going to be covering in this video today. So after I cover this part one, on the next coming video, I'm going to explain to you guys how about 2.1 and 2.2 are going to connect together. So for now, I'm just going to go on and focus on 7.1 first so let's see the next video now the first thing is for this chapter you're gonna understand the elements inside so the elements that we have for this cost pengeluaran chapter is all about kilang sahaja so let's explain starting from the topic name which is called cost pengeluaran so let me zoom in a little bit on that part so cost actually meant by belanja while pengeluaran means your production. So means example, if I am a kilang kasut. So what is my production about? My production is about kasut. Uh, that is the meaning. So pengeluaran can also be translated as kilang. Because when you guys are producing your own products as a business owner, of course, I would produce it in the factory instead of inside my shop. So depending on how big your business is, but in this topic, we're talking about mainly factory. So in this 7.1, we cannot include anything that is out of kilang. So example, pejabat, office things, then we will exclude them out from this area. So cost pengeluaran, we have total of four different parts of cost. So the first type of cost is the main one, which is our materials. So that's called bahan. So this bahan can be either translated as bahan langsung, dot L, or you can call it as bahan mentah either one so if you were to see them appearing in your question paper i would normally put some symbols on it so if you are doing exercises at home i recommend you to just highlight them whenever you see any bahan items so literally in your question paper all the bahan things that are related you will highlight them all so how are you going to solve for your bahan part actually this bahan langsung uses our account perdagangan's formula which is the cost jualan format. So you all know how cost jalan works. Cost jalan has uh, your belian. Okay, wait, 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 before belian, remember, you don't jump straight to belian. We have to start from inventory first. So it's like your usual cost jalan. If this kilang is new, then yeah, probably you wouldn't have inventory hour. But as long as you do notice that there is an inventory hour inside your question, then you got to include it in. So start from inventory hour. Tambah Berlian, but you also got to see is there pulangan or not. So if there is, you just do the usual way. So cost jalan format. This is how your bahan langsung going to be. So I'm going to just list out a few using, you know, verbal way. So we're going to have inventory hour, inventory akhir, berlian, pulangan, and one more thing is our Audi. But in this chapter, not entirely Audi, but we will have this. RD instead, okay? So why is there the U is missing? It's because we are separating materials with workers. So instead of putting the upah under cost jalan, now it's called bahan lang. So my, I don't put workers under bahan. I will put workers under buru. So if you were to see upah langsung with the langsung word, eh, then you put them under buru. So we are just going to separate out lah, the four so which is uh, Audi, you're going to split the upa out towards your buro part. So you will only have angkutan masuk, duty dengan insurance. So the real question is, angkutan masuk wo. If they didn't say bahan, can I put into this section? Yes, the answer is yes, because we are now having kilang. So my kilang is where I produce my product. I no longer need to ship from outsiders. That's why angkutan masuk will be from my kilang. 
okay? But angkutan must of what? Of my materials. That's why even if they didn't say bahan langsung, as long as you see angkutan masuk, duty ataupun cukai import, and as well as insurance. But you gotta take note, is it insurance atas belian or not? If it is insurance atas belian, then you gotta include into this section. So this is how your bahan langsung going to be. Just remember, use cost jalan format, but take things that are bahan langsung. Second part, your buru. Buru is going to be about workers. So what type of workers, kind of expenses I can put under here? I want to say, uh, actually, usually we will look for obvious ones, which is upah buru langsung. Or else then they will say buru langsung. But sometimes they will say gaji pekerja kilang. How do we say that is a buru langsung leh? Uh, because if it's a pekerja kilang, a regular worker, there's no specific job post for it. Then of course, what they do inside is to help you with your production. So to define buru langsung are people that works directly in the production chain. Means this person must be involved in helping you make the product. So these are direct workers. If they come to work, they get paid. They don't come to work, they don't get paid. So this is how buru langsung will work. So what if you see such thing as gaji juru jaw? Now take note, uh, juru jaw is salesman. Do you do sales inside your kila? You don't. That's why if you see gaji juru jaw, would you include into your cost pengelaran? You wouldn't. So that one is up to your perjabat to settle. So over here, we only want people of kilang. Okay? So bahan buru. So we are going to go in this way. So even now in my screen, I'm putting them in a horizontal way, which is like an equation. But when you rearrange them into penyata format, it's exactly the same. Just follow the sequence. First one, bahan. Second one, buru. And the third one is going to be our belanja langsung. So it sometimes it's, you can call it belanja langsung. Sometimes you can also call it bayaran langsung. There is two, these two types of names. So you see which one you can remember, then you put them in. Okay, same one. So what is belanja or bayaran langsung? It's actually the copyrights that we buy to keep protect of our artwork or our uh, new inventions. So like example, if you are a branded car, branded bag, okay, you don't want people to copy your bag designs and stuff like that. So I gotta buy some, uh, you know, copyrights or patent and stuff like that. So belanja ataupun bayaran langsung, the name is quite special one. I'm pretty sure you guys can see it immediately if it were to be in a question. Example, royalty, patent, ataupun hak cipta. So only these three. If you were to see these three either one, then means you will have belanja langsung. So these three added together, they are of langsung parts. That's why by adding these three langsung items together, you will come up with this name called as cost prima. So what is prima means? Huh? Prima means primary cost. Huh? So anything that I need to spend before producing my product, these are called cost prima. So after I calculated my cost prima, next up, we come into cost overhead. So this cost overhead uh, is actually going to be labeled as this for uh, this symbol, which is B circle. So this B circle is what we usually use in other chapters as belanger symbol. Huh? But why I use it here is because this cost overhead is exactly what you usually see belanja are. Example, insurance, car the buyer, everything, those are under cost overhead. So you can also understand cost overhead as expenses that are fixed inside your kilang. Well, so what does it mean? It means that if now is a public holiday, I'm probably closed for 10 days. Do I still have to pay rent? We still have to pay rent. So all these fixed costs of the kilang, we will have to put under cost overhead. So very simple to classify one. As long as the belanja doesn't have the langsung word, then it's immediately under cost overhead. So we we'll label as belanja. But one thing that you need to take note is they must have the kilang word. So for BAP 7 question, uh, they like to split into ratios, which is example they will give you at maklumat tambahan, maybe like this insurance. And then there is such thing as kilang dengan pejabat. So they will give you percentage, example, kilang 70%, pejabat 
30%. So what you need to do is go into the list of your items, split your insurance into two parts, kilang dengan pejabat. But do I really have to do this too? I'll say you can consider if the question asks for account perdagangan dan untung rugi or not. Because usually for part 7 question, right, they will stop at account perdagangan sahaja. So for part 8, they will usually ask you to prepare account pengeluaran, which is what we see here, lah, okay, with all the kilang courses. While part B, they will say account perdagangan. So I want to say, uh, please don't get too comfortable with the question being always stop at account perdagangan. Because recently in our trials paper, there was once that the question came up with done, Untung rugi. So you know what will happen? A, your account perdagangan will only have jualan belian. But then in account untung rugi, you will have all the types of belanja dengan hasil of pejabat. So actually, uh, pejabat is talking about your store, which is the kedai. So anything that is meant for kedai, you will count under the pejabat ratio and you put it under account untung rugi. So it depends whether they give you this or not. If they ask for account untung rugi, then yes, both ratios you have to count out for them. Then only you can do your part B. Ma. But if they didn't ask for it, they stop at account perdagangan. Will I bother calculating pejabat? I wouldn't. I will just skip it, just do the kilang portion will do. And then that is for your cost overhead. So this is our bug to your cost pengeluaran. The format is exactly the sequence that I've written over here. You will start from bahan, buruh, belanja langsung. Add together, become cost prima. Moving on, after cost prima, then you're going to get your cost overhead. This is going to be the fourth part where you will add together after you found your cost prima. But at the end of it, after you add it together, is it directly cost pengeluaran? No, you will have this item called as kerja dalam proses awal dengan up here. So I want to say it will be at the bottom of your answer. So how you deal with it is like usually inventory awal and inventory up here. Will you plus or minus our Our is always plus. Up here is always minus. So at the end of it, before you can find your cost pengeluaran, you just take the jumlah of all your costs uh, above. Uh, plus uh, KDP our minus KDP up here. Then you will get your cost pengeluaran already. So this is Bob 7.1. So moving on, I'm going to be explaining TPM. So please stay tuned for my next part. Mm -hmm.